I just finished watching two nights Smackdown from the streets of Laredo throughout the entire episode. This was, this was a pretty good episode, I think. He started off with Theodore Long coming out saying he had his big huge announcement for how to create a new number one contender. I don't know where that idea went. He simply dropped it apparently. I would like to know what that big idea was because when Batista came out he felt intimidated. Batista craved for another title shot, which is by all means fair. Rey Mysterio came out and for some reason he was able to compete for Bat against Batista for this number one contenders championship. Why? I don't know. I mean, whom has Rey Mysterio been lately? He's like lost every match he stepped into the ring to compete in. However, they were determined to wrestle in a number one contender match with the winner uh, taking on The Undertaker in the next week's episode of Friday Night Smackdown on the Christmas Day, December 25th. Winner of that match, a match, what I don't like with matches with Rey Mysterio facing big guys, it, it's like in 75% of the cases the big guys doesn't look, it, it is not Rey Mysterio looking good beating them, it's actually these big guys looking bad because they look all clumsy and foolish and like jerks. For instance, take Batista vs. Rey at Survivor Series. Before Batista took over in Dominator, Rey had a few minutes where Batista looked like the like a moron in the ring just for be, getting beaten up, beaten up by Rey Mysterio. Still, I think they have a good chemistry. This ma uh, match tonight was pretty good. They did very good, and leading up to Rey Mysterio's win was actually very well done. I think Batista's getting really over as a heel. He's m heavily booed and he feels comfortable being a heel. So Rey Mysterio facing The Undertaker next week on SmackDown. Other things going on tonight, we saw CM Punk come out and actually I must uh, give kudos to Matt Stryker. He's becoming, he's becoming twisting somewhat into a heel commentator. I don't know if anyone of you have noticed that, but he is doing this little, saying this little lines, tweaky lines and mean lines towards wrestlers simply sticking up for the heels. He's done it several times for CM Punk. He did it this week as well saying what a great man CM Punk is for telling us people how to get live a good and clean life. And he also said CM Punk doesn't need drugs to fly. Simply when CM Punk went off the top rope which could have been a shot at Jeff Hardy. I don't know when he also said during the Divas match where Beth Phoenix defeated Maria that <laughs> did you hear what Michelle McCool said about Maria? The underfed redhead, <laughs> she doesn't get any food because Piggy James did it all, <laughs> how funny that was. So he, he's really playing along with the heels and I think that's really funny, that's something that sticks out, it's uh, funny for, for the older fans, and yeah, absolutely he's sticking out, and he's not trying too hard, he says it completely naturally as if it's what he thinks, and that's his opinion, and he doesn't seem overly heel doing it, that's what's so very great about Matt Stryker. CM Punk just George Ge Luke Gallows and Drew McIntyre defeating Matt Hardy, R Truth, and John Morrison and Luke Gallows, CM Punk picking up another victory. They look very solid as a tandem. Speaking of tandems, we saw as a return match from last week's Superstars. We saw Hart Dynasty defeat Jimmy Yang Wang and Slam Master J. And speaking of tag team matches on Superstars, these two past superstars have had a great tag team match and first match I just mentioned go back and watch it if you haven't seen it Hart Dynasty vs Slam Master J and just Jimmy Yang Wang at Superstars last week awesome match and this past week yesterday we saw Crime Time defeat Dolph Ziggler and Mark Knox it doesn't sound as much of a big of a match does it but it was awesome Mike Knox we have seen him doing this big cross body blocks they're pretty good but wow he did a like six foot five drop kick and that's pretty amazing for a big guy like that to do such a move. Other than that we have seen this established tag teams like Hart Dynasty defeating Wang Yang and Slam Master J twice. We saw Crime Time defeating Mike Knox and Dolph Ziggler last night on Superstars and we saw this past Monday Legacy defeating Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne. Somewhere WWE apparently trying to solidify these permanent tag teams making them look very strong towards these temporarily put together tandems. Very good way of establishing the permanent tag teams, building up the tag team division, making them look strong. And also speaking of next week's uh, Smackdown on Christmas Day, we're gonna see our D Generation X showing up on Smackdown. I hope they keep doing that because they are now the tag team champions. Remember 
Chris Jericho and Big Show, they were on like every Raw, every SmackDown. Chris Jericho even showed up on ECW. We need D Generation X to do that. I'm afraid there will be too much on Raw, but they're going to be on SmackDown next week facing the Hart Dynasty. And after winning the match, Hart Dynasty cut a very interesting promo where they put a parallel and reference to the Montreal Screwjob, saying like their far fathers, meaning British Bulldog and Jim Neidhart, they were not going to leave and run out from D Generation X, a parallel to where in 1997, Bret Hart, British Bulldog, and Jim Neidhart, Jim Neidhart immediately after the screw job left WWE F to de and departed to WCW. They were be better than the fathers, they said. They were going to do something they weren't able to do, meaning they will beat, in their own words, D Generation X for the titles next week on SmackDown. And simply, it's very interesting. They said they were better, better than the fa fathers. That puts a new aspect to, to their t-shirts which I haven't thought of earlier which say something like simply better than the best simply maybe a shot at Bret Hart's old uh, catchphrase that he was the best there is the best there was and the best that there ever will be very interesting now especially with Bret Hart's uh, signing a contract with the WWE that will go on effect on January 1st 2010 uh, also, we saw Chris Jericho wrestle the great Kali tonight. Chris Jericho ran out, got, getting counted out. Chris Jericho's promo before the match, awesome. A lot of good promos tonight. Chris Jericho simply said that he, this was the worst time of his life. He was left alone, all alone. Big Show wasn't with him. He was thrown out on Raw. And everyone in the crowd was laughing at him. It was so horrible. He's awesome. This guy is so awesome. He can rally up every crowd. He's a psychological masterpiece. So that's why I like him and simply get so entertained by this guy. He actually had a very interesting match with Great Kali. Something very few can do. And I don't know, maybe we get a feud between these two. Of course, not the best of feuds, but I don't mind. Chris Jericho can have a great feud with absolutely everyone. The way he ran out on. Great Kelly is simply showing his hand gesture. He was, didn't want anything to do with him. Completely awe-inspiring. He does everything so good. He's a modern-day heel of old days standards. He's so very good at what he does. He simply is one of the best at what he does. He isn't lying about that. And so, kudos to him. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, what I had to say about this week's SmackDown that I can come up with right now. Kudos to Matt Striker, as I said. Uh, I will try to include here the my final resolution predictions. They come up this Sunday, this pay-per-view, and I have wrote it all down here so I can go through it really quickly. Simply, I believe my final resolution for this Sunday TNA pay-per-view predictions are. Abyss and Foley over Stevie and Raven, that's Dr. Stevie. Lashley will go over Scott Steiner. We will have De Niro, Morgan, Hernandez and Suicide go over 3D. Jesse Neal and Rhino. We will we'll also see the British Invasion go over Motor City Machine Guns. That's for the Tag Team Championships. British Invasion will retain in my mind. Angle against... Desmond Wolf Angle will go over in a 3 degrees of hell match. I really look forward to that match. It's going to be great. Tara will go over ODB and simply give, get the title from other knockout singles title. AJ Styles will retain his title against Daniels. And then we have the Feast of Fire match. Kyoshi, I believe, actually will the get the briefcase for the X Division title. He hasn't got that much of a push. He's a great wrestler. We will see someone of Consequences Creed and Jay Lethal with the Tag Team Championship briefcase. Cody Deaner will get fired, good riddance, and Robert Roode actually I believe is in line for a big push and I think he will get the championship case, especially as we saw him in the finals against Bobby Lashley in the tournament a few weeks ago, that's my predictions for final resolution, be sure to check out my Kill or Keep ECW brand video, new subject coming up this Sunday, share your thoughts, thank you for watching, have a nice day.